Here at Mystery History, we cover the unexplained areas of antiquity, either ignored, avoided, dismissed, or simply given an incomplete or often illogical historical lifeline of existence by mainstream academia, particularly those which we have covered of significant size, quarried from many miles away, now often immovable, and once transported, and either erected or placed atop one another seemingly effortlessly. We were, in a past series of investigations, looking into an interesting quarry within the Bazda cave system on the edge of Turkey, a place with particularly good granite and a proven source of stone for numerous megalithic sites many miles around. Later proven by us via the preserved linkages in tool marks to have been used by more than one group, as if they had coalesced at this particular site. Yet, as mentioned, we have long argued that not just one advanced civilization capable of moving and cutting these incredibly monumental megalithic stones have been and gone, and we feel we have and continue to provide sufficient proof of these claims. The Colossi of Memnon, said to have once sang at sunrise, are both made of stones thousands of tons in weight, yet are eroding to dust along with countless others, yet clearly once precisely cut, just like all the other stone ruins we cover worldwide. Yet sites like Petra and the polygonal casing stones found in some most curious of places such as the pyramids of Egypt, preserving stones in a similar condition to the Colossi. Certain stone monuments of gigantic size, found and stored in near-perfect condition, are found in these same areas, as if somehow spared catastrophe. Does this prove a sudden great flood? They regardless, we claim, prove several cycles of activity at stone-cutting creation. Were some monuments submerged and therefore preserved under the sediments? like those secretly removed from the pyramids and sphinx during initial investigations. Were they attacked by a geological event? The perfect preservation of some of these statues must eliminate sandware as a possibility. The pursuit to the answers to these questions become closer, and we feel highly compelling. There are many baffling, anomalous artist depictions that litter the megaliths all over the rainforest which now submerge the super-civilization or mega-metropolis which was once known as the Mayans. Pekal's tomb and the strange rocket designs we have shared before, location now unknown, the seal seemingly showing a craft of ancient high technology, indeed not to mention his choice to have a vivid green death mask all mere coincidence? Even the stolen plaque, fortunately photographed before its mysterious theft, depicting a doomsday event. Volcanic eruptions in the background, with drowning natives, which accompanied a mass submersion found and subsequently stolen from Tikal. Mere coincidence? Yet with all these compelling pieces of evidence, all these artistic accounts, whether through cover-up or lack of discovery and accurate artistically created depiction. Of this event of a peaceful trade via ancient alien contact, what the argument needed to become unarguable may have just been discovered deep in the Mayan rainforests. Accurate depictions created in brittle yet precious jade tablets of considerable proportions, artistic interpretations of these events, and the giving of gifts actually once occurring. A statement released by Julia Levy, the Minister of Tourism for the Mexican state of Campache, Luis Augusto Garcia Rosado, the highest-ranking government official to go on record confirming the discovery of this possible extraterrestrial life, said, quote, Guatemala, like Mexico, home to the ancient yet advanced Mayan civilization, has also kept certain provocative archaeological discoveries classified and now believes that it is time to bring forth this information. Rosado spoke of contact, quote, between the Mayans and extraterrestrials, supported by translations of certain codices which the government has kept secure in underground vaults for some time. In a telephone conversation with the rap, he also spoke of, quote, 
landing pads in the jungle that are 3,000 years old. End quote. There are many ancient stories derived from religious texts, which, when taken literally, are simply illogical, easily disproven as that of a symbolic nature, rather than literal documentation of true events. However, there are a rare few contested as literal truth, and a handful of these for good reason. The conviction is that these events left such a lasting impression on the creators of these texts and ancient scrolls that they included them within their writings. One of these being that of the so-called legend of the Tower of Babel. Once declared as a symbol of oppression, it is now argued by many as simply being merely another symbolic myth, such as many other stories found within religious writings. However, there are numerous details which cannot escape the microscope of some investigators. And now that a brick has been found, legitimately dated to this time, and commissioned by the same claimed king, the argument for the actual past existence of this incredible structure has gained traction within even the most skeptical academic mind. A brick stamped with the seal of the ancient Babylonian King Nebuchadnezzar II, biblically stated as the man who commissioned the construction of the tower itself has been discovered. Dr. Irving Finkel of the British Museum said, quote, When you look at the early chapters of the Bible, it is clear that some of it is drawn from the Judeans' own records. It incorporates narratives which they must have encountered for the first time in Babylon some so powerful and striking that the authors who worked on the Hebrew texts incorporated them to tell their own story. He continued, In the book of Genesis, what we have here is a brick which fits exactly into that specific context. There can be no doubt that the stimulus for the story and the narrative must have taken shape during the Babylonian exile. The evidence could help to prove the existence of the Tower of Babel, its story written by a desperate population in exile held captive by a ruthless king." End quote. Yet, as always, regardless of the corroborating evidence, it will, like the many other details and aspects of the claimed tower, continue to encounter dismissal by many. With even those who are convinced of its past existence, in disagreement over its original location. Logic would suggest that, if built, it was within ancient Babylonia, some 500 miles from Jerusalem. Yet some argue it was actually built somewhere else, within the Middle East. Regardless of these disagreements, we find the brick, its still intact mortar, Dr. Finkel's quotations, and indeed, its intriguing seal, highly compelling. The legend of an underworld, or the inner earth, have abound historical literature and ancient belief systems, with some more serious believers in this theory who, although with nefarious intention, spent considerable funds in the pursuit of the gateway to this realm. Archaeological documentation of its existence is found throughout the ages, seemingly adding validity, no matter how hard to believe, it persuaded said group's greatest minds into the pursuit of its existence. Within antiquity, specifically Greek, ancient Egyptian belief systems, a gateway to an underworld, was at the time commonly associated with a passageway into hell, and the passage through. Representative of these acts include Hades, Osiris, Anubis, etc with the Greeks even creating necropolises, claiming gateways were often located at the meeting of three rivers. Journey through the underworld With the Egyptian scripture, we feel not only being the most elaborately constructed, but by that measure the most intriguing to explore. Throughout the underworld journey, the traveler contended with strange beings and gatekeepers, with Osiris found within the Hall of Final Judgment, here the plea of case for entry into the afterlife. The Final Judgment involved a two-part process. 
standing before the 42 divine judges. Here they stood before 42 divine judges and pleaded their innocence of any wrongdoing during their lifetime. Part 2. The Weighing of the Heart Ceremony The heart, which contained a record of all the deceased's actions in life, was weighed against the feather of the goddess Ma'at. This feather was the symbol for truth and justice, and helped determine whether the deceased person had indeed been virtuous. The Afterlife Known as Life in the Field of Rushes, a reflection of the real world perfected. Blue skies, rivers and boats for travel, gods and goddesses to worship, and fields and crops to be plowed and harvested. The dead were granted a plot of land in the field of rushes and were expected to maintain it. However, other theories arose over the years, these far more commonly connected to the posit of inner earth theory, with portal into the center of our planet, one in which advanced beings dwell. Probably the most famous of ventures and eventual retreats who attempted to find this portal within Antarctica. Curiously, now, not only believed by the Americans, but also the Nazis as the location of the portal, reportedly encountered craft of incredibly advanced capabilities. But there were also other attempts, more covert, only partly declassified over the years, showing an intense interest in this same area by the Third Reich, who, while in power during the Second World War, initiating a number of expeditions whose results still remain closely guarded secrets. Many have died or mysteriously vanished without a trace, looking for this elusive portal's validity, now believed to be positioned in one of the most inhospitable geographical locations on Earth. Yet its belief throughout history is undeniable, and as such is a theory which we find highly compelling.